Welcome to So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. If you are trying to evaluate whether real estate is the right career for you, wondering whether you are doing the right things to launch into quick success, or looking for tips and tools you can use today to become a more productive agent, this is your podcast. Welcome to So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. This is season four, Learning from Legends. And today we have a very special guest, Lydia Gable here with us. Lydia is a team leader of the Lydia Gable Realty Real Estate Group, sorry, in Westlake Village, California. Her team has been a the number one team for many, many years. I think you said 10 years, right, Lydia? About five years as the team, yeah. Five years as the team. Okay, but I'm sure you were like the number one agent for a long time before that. <laughs> and lots to share. So number one in Conejo Valley, California, and she just shared with me, if you're listening to this, it's, this is probably summertime, but they just had tons of of rain in California. And now the California sunshine has come back out. So we're living vicariously through you here in in rainy DC. Super excited to have you um, with us today. Lydia's team currently consists of eight agents for staff, and she is number one ranked um, on many of the online lead conversion systems, Zillow, Homelight. Um, She's a Zillow Flex member and has some cool stuff to share about seller seminars, the Tuesday tips that she gives to her audience, and was recently a presenter at Tom Ferry's Elite Retreat. So super cool to learn from you today. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Meredith. Oh my gosh. I can, kudos to you. Four years of running a podcast, a successful co- podcast with followers yeah. and running a great real estate business. Obviously, you have a lot of lot of hats off to you and congratulations to you because this is a lot of work. And I think what you're offering your viewers obviously is of value. And so I think if you do something of value, the followers come. And so hats off to you. Congratulations. Well, thank you. The labor of love. Thank you for yeah. putting me on. Like I'm, I feel honored to be here. You know, oh, I'm so excited that you are here. So tell us a little bit about what brought you to real estate to begin with. What did, what did you do before? And what was like that thing that you knew this is the career for me? Well, interestingly enough, I was at a seminar this morning and they said, if you were going to write an autobiography book, what would the title be? Mm -hmm. And my autobiography book was Stay Open because you never know what's going to come your way. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel I somewhat fell into the real estate business, but a little bit about me. I'm originally from Minneapolis. I have a business background. I was a buyer for Target. I graduated from the University of Minnesota. So I grew up and went to the University of Minnesota with a business degree, uh, started in the buying route at, as a buyer for Target in Minneapolis and bought toys and ran and did that for many, many years. And Mattel actually brought me to the marketing side and brought me out to California. So in my mid-20s, I had to leave the cold. They started recruiting me in October, November, and I accepted the job and I moved out on December 26th. And I called my mom and it was like 30 below and I'm in Hermosa Beach going, I think I died and went to heaven. Like, <laughs> right. So I worked at Mattel and then uh, different toy companies and I was VP of marketing for Sega of America up in the Bay Area. So I just kind of stayed up and down California had my children in, got married, had my children in Northern California and came down to Southern California, tried to not work. And I'm a worker. And my friend said, look, you'd be really good in real estate. Like, you know, you like people, you like houses. And I was like, sure, I can do it part time. Right. Because this is an easy business, right? We can do this part time. And I was like, I, I, I ran it. I was VP of marketing. I had a big staff. I can do it. And I got into it and it got into my skin, under my skin. And now 17 years later, um, ran, I was on my own for seven, eight years. And I've been running the team for about eight years. So um, I would say I fell into the business because my girlfriend just said, go get your license. It'll be fun. And I thought I could do it part time. 
<laughs> All right. So I want to ask you about that. That is a, a very, a very interesting story. And I love that you said always be open. That's so important because you do never know what's going to, what's going to present itself as a potential opportunity for you if you do stay in that open state. Love, love, love that. So let me ask you about this theory that you had of maybe I can do this part-time because I know some people listening might also have that theory in their minds. And as you will find out, listeners, if you haven't already tried, many brokerages or team leaders will not consider you if you, if you use those words, part-time, even dual career, which is what I really call it because if you're going to try to do it, quote unquote, part-time, you better be ready to have two full-time careers, one being full-time plus, which is real estate. Were you able to, to accomplish a, a dual career or like a part-time segue? Well, when I say part-time, it was because I was a mom first. My kids okay. were very young and I really wanted to just support financially and have something to do for my head. Mm. Um, being a businesswoman and being, you know, kind of in a corporate environment and then going to stay-at-home mom was very difficult for my mental state. And so I really thought this was an easy business. I really thought 17 years ago, this was a very easy business. Like you just meet people, you show them houses, you negotiate and you close escrow and you get a big check, right? <laughs> and so when I was interviewing, I would say, I'm just going to do this part-time. And Meredith, just as you said, a lot of brokers said, if you're going to do this part-time, this is not the place for you. So I had to, um, you know, I had to lie my way in and just go, oh, sure, I'll be this full time. I'll do this full time. And when I got in, I realized that in order to be when I started watching who was successful, because I'm competitor, I am very competitive and I was a competitive figure skater like my high school, my younger age brought me to be a, a competitor. Mm -hmm. And I was like. I didn't want to just do one or two transactions a year. It was very hard to do. It's very hard to be in this business and do two or three transactions a year. It's expensive. It's time consuming. Consumers aren't going to trust you. And I just thought because of my experience and my background experience that I would be trusted. Mm -hmm. And I was never that. And I realized that once in order, you got to treat this like a business. You got to treat this like a job. Yeah. And I think today that's the biggest misnomer that agents have is that we all want it for our independence and our own time and freedom. So some of that is true. You, you should be able to run your own schedule. You should be able, you know, definitely if you have something to do with your children or a doctor's appointment, it has to be in your schedule. Mm -hmm. But we need to plan your day and you need to treat this like a job. And in order to be successful, even 40 hours a week isn't successful. I don't know any job that you want to make money and be successful that you can do in 40 hours. And I don't think there's any, as you can be an entrepreneur or go work for a corporation. Most companies are expecting more from you today. And, and they're, they're, I think, Real estate is one where I remember with Tom, somebody being on stage and going, oh, you're doing the marketing and you're doing the lead gen and doing the prospecting and you're doing the client service and you're doing it all. And you got to stay up on technology and you got to stay up on the contracts. And, oh, my God, that fell out of escrow. And, you know, like it's nice. very hard to be an independent agent today and it's very hard to do everything. Yeah. And I think that's when we start, you know, when I look at it in 2013 team when I started the team is like when Tom had this woman up on stage doing the juggling and that's just a vision that I have mm -hmm. um, but I think it was because going back to your original question I thought I could do this part-time because I'm smart and I could do this but it doesn't really matter how smart you are this is not a part-time job this is just not a part-time job no, completely agree with you completely agree so that's that's really good for listeners to hear so when you have people come to you and say, like someone who wants to join your team and say, you know, I think I'm going to do this part-time. What do you say to them? I just say, well, we don't accept part-time part -time agents. So we have a culture and a team of accountability and prospecting, and we want everyone to be able to produce business and be part of it. And so that's the 
kind of culture that we run. So if you want to be part time, I tend and I I have to say a lot of my friends' kids now get their license. And so they'll call me, will you talk to my child and you know, whatever. And I probably talk more people out of the business than into the business. Yes. Yes. Because it's very easy to see you, me being successful, you know, and, you know, running teams and, and it, it looks easy, right? Yeah. Um, but they don't see the grit. They don't see the real work and effort behind it. And what I always say to anybody coming in is this is a prospecting business. Number one, we are in a sales job, right? And yes, we handle people's largest asset, but that's wonderful. And that's fun. And that's wonderful but we are in a prospecting business. And so we can't forget that. And, and we don't have a store that like a card, like it's just changed. Right. 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 Yeah. I, my, my tagline, I always say is we are in the lead generation business specializing in real estate. (laughs) When you get your head in that that mindset, I think then you, you reframe the way that this business works. Yeah. But then all the the real estate shows that are out there, yeah, they don't show the lead generation. They just show you the results. The results. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. houses walking through, seeing the big kitchens, you know. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And when you're with a team like yours, that's where you're helping the agents learn how to build that lead generation muscle. And you're a team that provides leads as well, I know. So you're helping them with the other piece of it, which is the lead conversion. So once you get the generation happening, that's like kind of step one. Step two is being an effective lead lead converter, which is the other thing those shows don't show. By the time you're in front of that person, you've already done the two of really the hardest pieces of the business. Now you get to do the fun part, which is show the house, write the offer, close escrow, all of that. Uh, But that's where having someone who is a real knowledgeable mentor and can give you guidance as a leader is so critical for anyone who really wants to get good at this business and make it their career. And I think given 2023 and given where we are and given the forecast for the next few years, um, that part of skill conversion, lead conversion is the missing factor. Yes. And, And that is the, you know, the skill that everyone has to evolve on because it's very skill-based right now. And it's very being a consultant and understanding and being passionate and knowing the fears and knowing numbers and knowing, you know, headline news and knowing people are concerned about their employment or unemployment, or, you know, there's a lot of headlines, scary headlines out there. And, in and and the homes are expensive right interest rates homes like it's expensive so um your your lead generation and your lead conversion for those agents out there practicing that muscle on a daily basis and really um pr- making sure that that skill is in place is key to being successful in the next coming years Yes, completely agree. And I think you do two really cool things that help with both the lead generation and the lead conversion, where you are becoming what we call a knowledge broker and helping your agents do that as well. So using real information, industry expertise, inside knowledge that not everyone has, and that luckily we are we have access to both as part of the Tom Ferry ecosystem and as you know, very plugged in agents in your um marketplace, you have this, this information that you can share. So we can help people understand what's really happening and the information behind it, rather than just the reactive headlines that they're seeing right now. So one of the things that I know you do to lead generate is your seller seminars. But I want to find out about that. I know you've had really good success with those. Your website is very cool. You can see pictures of you there actually conducting the seminars. So talk to talk us through what that process looks like from um, how you invite people to the format, the topics, and then the follow-up that helps you convert those leads from the seminars into clients. 
So I, I uh, did this at the elite seminar. So if it's okay, I'm going to just quickly share this okay, and, you know, you. just try to do a real quick run through here. And so I'm going to share this. Can you see it? Not yet. Um, hey, Aaron, I might need you. Hold on. I need my technical assistance. Mm -hmm. Oh, here Wait, we go. there you go. Here we go. We got it. I got it. Thank you. All right. So I'll just quickly go through this. You see the, where we are right now, right? Yes. So um, we started doing seller seminars in February of 2022. And we started seeing the market shift and we were like listings, we need more listings. And we realized that just like buyer generation, we need to do seller generation. And what I realize is a lot of sellers are thinking about selling or what do they need to do, but they're not quite ready to have people in their home yet. Mm -hmm. So we started doing these seller seminars and um, they've been successful in creating a seller pool of future sellers and staying in touch. Yeah. So I'm going to quickly go through, um, qu go quick, go quickly through this and, you know, not take a lot of time just so that if people want to reach out, they're more than welcome to reach out to me. We kind of talked about who we are um, and, you know, great way to talk to, you know, connect to people um, so what, you know, why do we do them? Who do we target? So I'm going to quickly go through that. Um, so what we realized is the people that are coming into solid seminars, they're about 15 older, they're downsizing, they're more traditional, they're not as technology savvy, and potentially some expireds. So that's a very good target market for seller seminars. Now, Lydia, do you think that applies to every market or did you do like some research or should we be doing research to figure out whether that's our likely attendee demographic as well? Um, so we were doing it and that's basically who we ended up. Okay. So, so the sample test that you took, that's, that's who came. Okay. And sense. so we've been doing them for a little over a year now and we just do it. We do, and I'll show you how we get people there, whether it's through our email list, mailers, Love it. social media, we tend to see that's about the sweet spot, right? Okay. Of course, that is, you know, we get younger, we get older, sure. but we tend to see that's about the people who are thinking, been in their home 10, 15 years, not really clear on what's going on. So that you know, that's exactly who, you know, they've kind of been in their homes for a long time. So that's been good. I think what I, what we do is before, during, and after. So that's the way we think through things through. So before mm -hmm. if you're thinking about doing a seller seminar, the important part is that you pick a location. And what we realize is we're in a market that's about a million, million and a half mm -hmm. as our average sales price. And we've tried different locations. We've tried it in our office. We've tried it at different locations. And what we tend to see is our we get the most people showing up in kind of this nice little restaurant. We serve them cocktails mm -hmm. and some appetizers. We do it around five, six o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. We're just starting to test lunches to see if that will make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have to kind of pick different places and try and see where you show up. Now we might try them back in the office because we haven't done them in the office. And I know there's a couple of people in the ecosystem who have been doing seller seminars and they're having some success back in the office. So maybe we'll try the office, maybe COVID now people are more comfortable coming back to the office. So I think you try that. Um, we've been doing it at a cadence about two times a month. So, you know, that's a good cadence for us. Um, that's, you know, just, again, you have to try these things and see what works for you. Yeah. That's been our formula. Go ahead, Meredith. Oh, that was, I was, I was going to say, yeah, I, just, I think probably you do have to test it out and try it in your, your market. And it might be different depending on where you are, what your office setup is, but there's no, nothing that says you can't try. Would you say, I have this feeling that if someone tries it, and they don't get huge attendance the first time they might give up. What do you say to those people? 
So it's like anything. We think the reason ours is successful is because the consistency factor. Mm. And I think um, I think it's very hard to get people the first couple times to show up. Okay. So I think have some people to just sit in, invite family members, mm. just so that there's more people seats, you know, more people in the seat. So it doesn't look empty. Yeah. Um, but I do think that the consistency people are seeing it that they basically, Oh my gosh, they're interesting enough. Like let's, we should attend. They keep doing them. Yeah. Yeah. So we use Eventbrite. So, you know, you've decided you're going to hold it. You set up a page on Eventbrite. People can RSVP there. They send out the automatic reminders. Eventbrite is great. I'm sure most of you listeners are familiar with Eventbrite. Um, so this is just kind of our, we put it on our landing page. We advertise people there with the date and how to go. Um we do a QR code so people, you know, can we use the QR code now? It's back. It's you know, something yep. old is new again. I think we all are using the QR codes. Marketing them is is super important. Now we're big farmers too, so people get used to our mailers. So mailing is expensive so i understand if you don't want to mail and it's expensive you can certainly door knock you can dip, drop off flyers um i think there's so many different ways of finding people um you can definitely do um you know social media so these are some mailers that we have up if you're you know watching this on youtube or whatever you can see we advertise it on the back of our mailers almost every mailer that we put out um and then we also do a lot of emails. So we have a big database. So we do a weekly email, which we were resisting for a long time, but I, so many people in the ecosystem are doing a weekly email. So we have a e yeah. uh, weekly email that goes out. And so right before the seminar, we have a video inviting them to come to the seminar. So we get a lot of people in our database coming from that. I won't play that. Um, we have, we do a slide broadcast, right, to our database. We have the agents on the team always have a thumbnail that they can invite people when they're doing an open house. We promote it at open houses. We do social media ads all around it. So there's a lot of ways of getting people there. Okay. Then at the seminar themselves, we obviously have a sign-in sheet. We have, give them a takeaway book. At, at the slide so that they can see an update and everything going on. And, you know, we bring in a laptop, a computer, we have a white screen. I go through a presentation, I, not me, I have me, I have agents, I have my marketing manager. So not one voice all the time. Um, so, you know, again, you see, we go through, we lead with knowledge. So we always lead with data. We, we're just a team of, we want to share what's, we think our job is to let sellers know what's going on in the market, who's selling, who's buying, what kind of updates do you need to do, you know, in a home, we share all of that with it, uh, them. So here's what we talk about. We welcome them, market update, who are today's buyers, how do we market their homes and selling tips? So we kind of go through that. It's about a 45 minute presentation. So you can kind of see what we look like there. We lead with data, some data that we share. We always share. We use KCM a lot. So we love KCM, whatever we can pick up nationally. We tell them, you know, kind of who are today's buyers, the millennials. So they, cause they have this fear, like who can afford their home, right? right? And then Sue, we, uh, you know, again, my marketing background, we market the heck out of our homes. So Sue gets up and talks about our marketing and how we differentiate ourselves to our competition, pricing, we give them tips on updating their home or not updating their home. A lot of people don't want to do anything to their homes. So we kind of give them tips that way. But the key really is here you go, low no SVPs, low attendance. Like, what do you do if you do this? And like I said, have family members or friends sit in for a while. If you have technical difficulties, get there early, like just like anything else, make sure you run through it because you this is your first time to impress sellers. And so they they really 
they're they're interviewing you without you coming to their home, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, lo- low audience engagement. Ours are pretty interactive. I'm always like, ask questions in between. Like, you know, we have a system. But if you have a question that comes up, raise your hand. Like we have no problem with it. And we like having a, we keep them small. We max out around 10, 12 people, 15 max, um, because they get too big. People don't want to talk. Um, so we like a smaller, more intimate group. Um, so we, and then they kind of look sold out. And so, you know, we like having a smaller audience so that people feel comfortable talking and sharing. Is that what your lean with love means? Like just to, to keep it small and lean in when they have questions? Yes. Okay, nice. And really, because a lot of times they're asking about themselves, personal, like, what if you did this? What if you did that? Yeah. And sometimes they don't want to share that in a big group. Right, okay, yeah. So people love free food and drink. So make sure you offer good food and drink because otherwise, you know, I, you know, I think in today's world, they like, something free. Mm -hmm. Got to promote the heck out of anything, just like anything else. It's a team effort. They don't want to just hear me. It gives the agents an opportunity to show their skill and, you know, and and get listings too. I share my listings that come out of that group with them. Um, I think more importantly is don't forget to ask for the business. And I think we sometimes assume, but I always say, Hey, you know, you, when you start interviewing, please put us on your list. We'd like to interview for the job, mm-hmm. right? So I think we assume sometimes as agents, they should know to refer us, but mm-hmm. I think we have to ask for the business and ask for referrals. Mm-hmm. And then what's your follow-up afterwards, right? Is just make sure you really follow up with them. Um, make, you know, call them, put them on a drip plan, put them on home bot, keep in touch with them. Um, really, it's just like a buyer lead there. This is a seller lead, right? And at the end, save time for private conversations. So that because a lot of times people want to share privately with, with you yeah. their situation. So don't just rush out, make sure you're like hanging out for a few minutes as people are trickling out. So someone has the opportunity to come up to you. Yeah, we kind of have the small tables, so we kind of break up because people will finish mm-hmm. their glass of wine or mm-hmm. food, and then we just have people sit down at the different tables. Do you have any questions? Perfect. Thank you for coming. Again, yeah. just kind of really um, comfortable. Yeah. So that's just kind of a quick summary of kind of our seller seminars and what oh, we do. Fantastic. Thank you for taking us through that. I love that you have even the you know two weeks before, the day before, day of all of the the timeline there to guide everyone through. So if you didn't get to see the slides Lydia shared, if you're listening to this on um, the audio podcast on Spotify or Apple podcast or wherever you listen, go to YouTube and you'll be able to see all of the slides that she's presented. Uh, So you can, she can walk through. That was, that was like the playbook for a successful seller seminar. No wonder you've gotten so much out of it because you put a lot into it and man, thank you for, for bringing us through it. So let me ask you about your Tuesday tips. What is that about? And that is is on Google that you're running your Tuesday tips, right? Do you want to find you? Um, yeah. So basically we started when, when Tom said do something, we tend to do it. And Tom said go on video a long time ago, right? And yes. so we started doing video a long time ago, we started this Tuesday tips. And so we, it's, you know, a lot on our, everything's on our YouTube, but we basically have Tuesday tips for buyers, sellers, market updates. Again, we're the, we tend to be the knowledge broker for our area. And so I come on every Tuesday and a lot of it is what are the agents hearing at an open house? What objections are we hearing? What are we trying to overcome? And so we keep a running list of things that we should be sharing with our not agent directed, but a lot of agents watch it because they're sharing with their clients. Like if this is what Lydia is saying, then I want to share it. So, but a lot of it, it's, client focused, right? And so we'd been doing Tuesday tips for six, seven years. And so now with Google, we used to do longer versions, two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. So now with Google, they want us to do everything short and we have to do less than 60 seconds. 
And so we're just converted to the trying to get our Google ranking up. Or Jason Pantana is, um, we want to be found more on Google. So everything we do is posted on Google and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. So, you know, we put it in the right format and that's, you know, what marketing does, but the knowledge is really what we're leading with data, KCM graphs, our graphs. And again, we've been doing this. I'm not trying to be an influencer. I'm not trying to be, I'm really a knowledge broker in my area. Beautiful. So for example, if you're hearing a recurrent theme of, I'm, I'm afraid we're heading into a recession, I'm afraid prices are going to fall, something or home values are going to fall. You are addressing that in your Tuesday tips via video with some data, some graphs, some charts from KCM, probably showing the historical trends and not saying, no, you're wrong, but saying, well, let's, let's look at the data and what we know, and then allowing people to make their own, draw their own conclusions based on the knowledge you're, you're giving them. 100%. Brilliant. Which I think too, all of this wraps back to you, you know, lead generated, you're putting yourself in front of people, the more visible we are, which is one reason Tom said, do video, do video, one, to be visible. And two, so people could see who you were through the video camera, get a sense of your personality, know that you're a real approachable person, especially people like you, Lydia, who I know have a very strong presence in your marketplace. And some people might think she's kind of famous, right? It might be like, I don't even want to I'm scared to approach her. They can see you're a human being. You're a person. You're approachable. You're happy to answer questions. And it builds trust in a way that makes that lead conversion so much easier when you actually have an opportunity to, in, to engage with that person in a real estate transaction. I, I think 100%. I think today you, you are researching people before you even call them, right? And I yep. think, Meredith, you do a very good job at this too, is like, we just want to make sure people know, like, trust us. Yeah. And a lot of times they they get to know us before they even pick up the phone and call us. And I think that's the important part that social media allows us to do. You doing this podcast, like the agents are just knowing that you're here to serve and offer information and be helpful. And so you're being kind and offering information is you're approachable. Like that's super important. Yeah. It comes back around for sure. Wow. This has been amazing. You've shared so much in this time frame, I'm so, so grateful. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap up? No, I would just say, look, if, if you're trying to get into the business, if you're in my area and you're trying to get in the business or not in my area and you want to have a conversation, I'm always open to a conversation because I do believe what, you, you know, give more than you get back and be grateful that I had the experience and to share and if it's really scary out there and you know keep grinding if you if this is your passion make it full time put a schedule in it and you know lead generate and mostly work on your conversion skills right now absolutely and find a team who can help you with that or a mentor fantastic so oh and i was just going to ask look at you you're like reading my mind i was going to say and if people do want to pick your brain or approach you how can they find you here we go so please go ahead, follow me, you know, tag me. I'm always available to an answer any questions. You can be here. You can find me here. Um, and I'm just so grateful and thankful for you inviting me on the show, Meredith. And you, you did a great job. And I guess I'll see you. I don't know when I'll see you. Are you going to Summit? Or, uh, I'm sure I'll be at Summit. Yeah. Okay. Yes, that's the next one. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Lydia. This has been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, everyone who has watched and listened today. I know you've gotten a ton out of this. This has been great, a great episode, great shares from you. And I want to thank the sponsors who make this podcast possible, the Rosette team with Embrace Mortgage, Paul Harsani with First to National Bank, Village Settlements, and Peak Settlements. Please consider supporting the sponsors who support us. And please feel free to connect with us and Lydia in social media, via phone, any way that you want to reach out. And please feel free to send us a question, a suggestion, a comment. And if you'd like to leave us a reviewer rating on the platform that you listen most, we would be so grateful. Thank you so much again. This has been So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. We'll see you next time. We are so grateful you joined us today. 
If you've benefited from the advice we share on the show, we hope you'll tune in to our next episode. Interested in learning more about my personal mentoring programs, our career kickstart course, or to pick up a copy of my book, Farming for Real Estate Agents, your step-by-step guide for becoming the go-to agent in your local market, visit www.meredithfogel.com and click the resources tab. If you are curious about becoming part of the List Realty family of agents, go to the www.thelistrealty.com website and click Careers from the About Us page. Or find me at the Meredith Global team on social media. Thank you for listening. This has been So You Want to Be a Real Estate Agent. We'll see you next time.